All right, welcome everybody to Coffee with Marcus, episode 180. It has been a while and today we're going to take a look at the markets and see what's happening and what I missed. And since I haven't been doing a Coffee with Marcus in what, three or maybe four weeks, I want to answer the question, where have I been? And most importantly, what have been, been what I have been doing during this time in the markets? Have I been trading? Did I close all of my position? So we're going to talk about the $500,000 account update because I know that many of you have asked about it. And then, of course, since you are here live, I want to answer all of your questions. Anyhow, super excited to be back. So good to see you here. So let's get started. This show is about real money and real trades. I'll show you the trading strategies that I personally trade, the tools that I use to trade my own accounts, and we will talk about the right mindset of a trader. Now, talking about mindset, I'm going to show you how to create SRC profits. And SRC stands for systematic, repeatable, and consistent, because that is the key to long-term success in the market. So if you are sick of all the hype and empty promises, and you want to learn trading strategies that actually work, then Click on like right now and let's get started. All right, let's get started. And first, let's just briefly see what is happening in the markets and what has happened in the markets while I was away. So today, the markets are up again. And if you if you look at this week, it seems that the, the markets basically for the past few weeks are kind of schizophrenic, right? I mean, here we are up, then we are down, then we are up, then we are down, up, down, up, down. I mean, it's just going back and forth. And this has pretty much been the theme since I have been gone. So uh, let me just zoom in a little bit so that we can take a look at this because I actually left on, I believe it was July 3rd or something like this. And we'll talk about where I have been. So right here, this is when I left in the market, went up a little bit, then they had the scare, bounced right back, made new all-time highs and then have been just going sideways. So not a whole lot going on. This is what the S&P 500 looks like. This is what the Dow looks like. And this is what the Nasdaq looks like. All pretty much the same. And this is very typical because that's what is happening in summertime. I am not the only trader that is taking some time off to, yeah, have some vacation to spend time with my kids. No, it's also other traders. And this is why typically in summertime we see this kind of uh, diddling around. And yes, diddling around is a technical term for these kind of markets. <laughs> Anyhow, so uh, let's, let's talk about how exactly I am trading these markets, what I'm doing right now and what I have been doing over the past few weeks. But uh, also, I promise you just mercifully brief update and I promise we'll keep it to three minutes like where have I been for the past few weeks? So, um, as you know, my kids are active sailors, and this is where we went to several sailing regattas. So I just want to show you what we did here. So we, we started in Austin, and then our first trip took us up to Rochester Yacht Club, which is right at the Canadian border. So this here was our first leg. We went all the way up there. That's where we had the North American Championship. So uh, the kids participated in the North American Championship. From there, we went down to Brand Beach Yacht Club, and this is where the National Championship took place. From there, we went to Warwick, where the kids had a team race nationals, and then all the way back. So the whole trip was 4,538 miles, and uh, if you are new to this channel and don't know me yet, this is what we are driving. So uh, we, we have the, the big rig motor home uh, with a 30 foot trailer right behind it, as you can see. So if you're wondering what's in this trailer, well, let me show you this is a peek inside of the trailer. So yes, in the trailer, there is a sailboat. Right here, there's also then a second sailboat. I have my little uh, spider in there and then also the Harley Davidson. So this is what is in the trailer, what we are doing when we are hauling across the country here. And um, so, so just to give you an idea, uh, the kids are sailing Club 420 sailboat. So this here is my son Julius uh, with his skipper Lucy. Uh, so this is from a, a different regatta. It wasn't that cold. This was, uh, I think it was uh, in winter when I took that picture. And uh, this is here, my daughter Vivian. So she's right here. 
and uh, with her skipper James. So they are competing in the same boat class. It is uh, the Club 420s. Now, when we did actually participate in the team racing championship, this here is uh, Team Texas. So uh, right here is my son Julius with the skipper. Uh, at this point, it was Tony. And right here is my daughter Vivian. So these are the boats. Anyhow, just thought I share this with you because some of you have asked, where's Marcus? Where's Marcus? And you know that for the stock market update, Mark uh, actually did a fantastic job of, uh, yeah, keeping you up to date and informed of what is happening. But hey, I know that you have all been waiting for how did I do in my account? What did I do while I was on the road, while I was driving this big rig? And when my kids are competing in the sailing regatta, I'm out with them on the water. So I'm in, a, uh, in one of these inflatable ribs uh, because that's easiest uh, to watch the kids here as a as a coach and safety boat, so I'm out there with them. And obviously, I don't have my laptop there. And you, you already know me, I don't like trading off my phone. I mean, off my phone, I, I can't see a darn thing. So uh, let's actually jump over uh, to the desktop and let's talk about the $500,000 account. Well, first of all, just to clarify, to make sure, it is $250,000 that I put in this account here, as you can see. Uh, $250,000 in cash, and I open it as a margin account. So this gives me $500,000 in buying power for stocks. So the goal is to trade for a living. And for me, trading for a living means that I want to make $15,000 per month. Now, $15,000 per month, this is enough to cover my living expenses. Uh, and I know everybody is different. You might have higher living expenses. You might have lower living expenses. Really, this is where you have your own goal. So, I mean, if you break it down, it's $180,000 per year. But you see, I also want to make sure that these are SRC profits. And what does SRC stand for? It stands for systematic, repeatable, and consistent. So uh, let's actually go back here and see what happens. So I started trading account on January 11th. And uh, this is account update number 11. So if you have been following me, then you know that January went really, really well, made $21,000. So I exceeded my goal here. Uh, in February, made $26,000. In March, $16,000. April, $9,500. So in April, I fell short of the goal. In May, $14,000. June, $22,000. So as you can see, by the end of June, I was at $112,000. So already ahead of my goal. And now the key question is, what happened while I was away? What happened to this account? What happened to my position? So let's take a look at this. And I uh, oh, need to bring it up here. Hold on, I can do this. Da, 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 the big reveal. So in July, I made $16,666,000. So by the end of July, uh, the account was at $131,874. Uh, I think a little bit less. I think I counted a trade that I closed this week, so not quite sure. Anyhow, so we will take a look at the trades here and what exactly I did in just a moment. But also, for those of you who are new to the channel, is uh, so how do exactly do I trade for a living? Well, I am uh, using two strategies, and uh, especially when I'm on the road, I'm focusing on the wheel strategy. And, and here's why. First of all, I have a couple of books, so I'll link to it in the description if you want to have one of these books. It's only $4.95 and I'll be happy to ship it to you. Uh, so if you don't have it yet, grab those or I'll also link to a playlist where you can see this. So um, here is why I like to uh, trade the wheel while I'm on the road, especially during this time, I already had several positions. I will walk through these positions here in detail. I'll, I'll show you the exact account and how much I made on these positions. And this is where it's easiest for me to sell calls. Because uh, let's just uh, quickly go back to uh, the, the wheel strategy and, and talk about it for a moment. So I'm just using it here quickly as a notepad. So if you're not familiar with the wheel strategy, it consists of three steps. Number one, uh, you are selling puts and collect premium. And these are put options, right? Uh, so it's an options trading strategy that combined with stock. So you might or might not get assigned. And uh, if you are getting assigned, meaning that now you own stocks, in this case, you sell calls against the existing positions. And this is pretty much what happened when I went on vacation. I was assigned in five positions. 
which is perfect because here's why when selling calls you don't have to scan for the markets every single day you don't have to scan for new position all you need to do is basically on a thursday or friday decide whether you want to roll a position or not and i did a video on this on how to roll options and i'll link to it in the description so therefore it was really for me kind of a hands-off trading i only had to peek at it maybe once a day and uh, not really do anything and this is perfect when you are on the road now um you, you know that if i'm looking for new positions i use the powerx optimizer here uh, especially the wheel the wheel scanner where i'm scanning for new positions and then i also have the wheel calculator that helps me decide uh, oops let me just share on my ipad here really quick uh, whether it makes sense to roll a position or not. Okay, so with, with this uh, just uh, out of the way, let's take a look at the positions that I did so that we can walk through them uh, as well as also talk about the open positions that I have right now. Okay, let me jump over to the account and uh, let's actually go to the trading history uh, for the month of July. So I'm going to share the, my desktop here with you so that you see it. And uh, we, we switch back and forth between uh, the the account here and then also the handy dandy iPad where I can show you what exactly I did. So um, as you can see, I did take a, a UAL, United Airlines trade. Again, one of the important things is that when you are trading this strategy, that you only sell puts on positions that you want to own. And uh, I wouldn't mind owning United Airlines, especially at this price that I sold it way back then. So let's take a look at this and uh, let's bring up UAL. And uh, I did sell this uh, earlier, probably somewhere around here with a strike price of 49. So what happened here, I collected premium and this expired worthless. Now, as you can see, after the expiration, uh, it actually dipped lower, so I would have been assigned, but this was really just a very quick trade uh, that happened here, and uh, it worked out really great. Now, I did uh, already have a pen position, and this is the next one that you see here. So pen is a position that I had, and this is where I'm following step number three. So I sold calls and collected more premium on pen. The same with CWH. And we take a look at these positions here. So Penn is actually a position where I sold a strike price. Uh, let's actually zoom in a little bit before I take some notes here. So I sold the strike price of 75. And as you can see, this was probably somewhere around here. So it must have been sometime in June. And since then, I own, um, and let me just see how many shares I own. I believe, uh, let me just double check, 1,300. So I own 1,300 shares of Pen right now, and I've been able to sell calls against this several times. In fact, this is working so well. Let me just show you of what happened with Pen uh, as I was selling all of these calls. I mean, initially I was selling puts, then I got a sign, and then I was selling calls. And as you can see here, Pen, I made uh, $12,407 in premium. Right now on this position, I'm slightly down because as you can see today, Penn is trading at $72 and I own these shares. I bought them at $75. So obviously here, slightly down on the stock, but if you see, uh, it's only $3,000, $4,000 down and I made $12,000 in premium. So that's not bad at all. So if I would close the position right now, uh, I would net $8,600 and something dollars you get the idea i'm not planning to do this so here with pen i just sold some more calls i actually sold the 77 calls and i did this earlier this morning so i'm planning to to hold this and this is one of the positions that i still have in my portfolio now cwh camping world um let's just see if i still have the strike price here now i, I cannot remember exactly where i got assigned in camping world it might have been right at uh, at 35 not quite sure maybe at 38 uh, let me just quickly see if i find it here in my account if i do um then i'll be i'll be happy to share this with you so it seems to me because i i sold 
I sold the 39 call, so I'm, I'm almost certain, I'm almost certain uh, that I got assigned at uh, 3,800. And here I had 2,700 shares, uh, so I sold uh, 27 options here. And again, this was super, super easy. As you can see, CWH have been trading around my strike price, so I could sell calls over and over and over again. And this worked out really, really well. So uh, CWH, let me just show you here also, uh, this is where I pocketed $11,610 until it got finally called away. And this is part of the wheel process here, right? I mean, first you're selling puts. Number two, you might or might not get assigned. Then you're selling calls. And also here you might get called away. And this is what happened uh, with uh, CWH. So CWH uh, was really well. I mean, $11,000. And again, this was a trade that was going on for probably a couple of months which is okay, right? I mean, I don't mind owning these shares. I mean, Camping World is a solid company. As you can see right now, it's trading at $43. So if I would have held the shares, I could have made more money, but this is not part of my trading strategy. All right, uh, let's go back and uh, let's take a look at the transactions here. Um, I, I sold a quick Uber put, and I believe that this was a, a one-day trade. Uh, you see, sometimes it, it's really that the markets just want to give you money. And if the markets say, hey, would you like to have some money? You just say, yes, thank you so much. You don't get greedy. And this is where it was a quick one day trade. You see, I sold more calls on Penn. I sold more calls on uh, CWH. I closed the Uber put here. And uh, then I also uh, did a JWN trade. Okay, let's talk about this. JWN Nordstrom. Uh, this was also a cool trade. So JWN, uh, I sold the strike price of 33. And uh, as you can see, I got assigned. While I was on vacation, I was getting assigned. And here I was trading uh, JWN uh, 3,000 shares. So 30 options contracts, uh, 3,000 shares on JWN. And this is where I just sold calls against it. You see, um, sometimes I talk to traders and they say, oh, well, what happens if you get assigned? And are, are you concerned? I don't want to get assigned. Shouldn't I roll? And again, if this is your strategy, that's fine. For me, when I get assigned, it's like, yes, ka -ching! because let me show you uh, what JWN did and how this turned out for me. So JWN, you see, whenever I'm getting assigned, uh, it's turning out really, really well. So JWN down here, $7,713. So for me, getting a sign is like yippee Uh Let's go back to the transaction because, again, we haven't talked in it in a few weeks, so I want to catch you up of what happened here. Uh, so this happened with uh, JWN. BAC, Bank of America. Yeah, that was another one. Uh, I sold uh, Bank of America puts. And uh, let me see. I still have Bank of America right now. I sold the 38 puts. Uh, so let me just uh, mark this up here. So uh, right here, this is the 38 level. So I sold there 38 puts and as you can see, I got a sign. So this is where uh, I own 2,600 shares of BAC, Bank of America. And I've been selling calls against them ever since. And uh, Bank of America has also been really, really good. Uh, let's actually jump over and take a look at Bank of America uh, right here. So as you can see, realized profits already $1,700, $1,690, So if I would close this right now, it would be $4,200. I'll probably get called away tomorrow because uh, I sold the 3850 call. So if tomorrow BAC is closing above 3850, um, that's when I'm getting called away. I'm making some money on the stock in this case, and I can collect all the premium. And that's a uh, a quick $4,000 trade. As you can see, this is a trade that I actually entered. <clears throat> so this has been a trade that's only a couple of weeks. Uh, here's the BAC trade. This was on July 14th. What's today? August 5th. So it's a three-week trade. And hey, if I can make dollars on a three-week trade, I'm not complaining. I'm taking it. So Penn, as you can see, um, more calls. I, I think I bought them back. I rolled it here. CWH, I, I told you, I really, really, really had fun. Uh, with CWH and with Penn, CWH, what, $11,000 or something like this. Uh, so we will, Teresa said, you're beating me now. I've only made 120,000. You, you, you'll catch up uh, because you have, it's a race. It's a neck to neck race here with Teresa and I. And also where's, where's my friend, Jim, um, Jim Vescio, because I think you're slightly ahead of me. So we're always uh, comparing notes here. 
Uh, so Jim, if you're here, uh, you might have already said it. I haven't had a chance to, to look at the comments yet. I will in a moment here. Just wanted to, to run you through this. Okay, uh, so ride, 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 ride. So of course, we also have ride. Uh, so I was able to sell a few more puts and bank another um, 11, no, what was it, $2,000. It was $2,000 because uh, I sold 50 puts uh, for 20 cents. So let, let's talk about ride. And uh, I, I really appreciate all of your concerns. I know everybody is always super concerned. Marcus, what about your ride position? Well, as you know, the ride position is not the best position that I have. In fact, that's a, that's a position that actually sucks because here's what happened. Let's just zoom out a little bit. This is a position that I took the last time I was on the road in the big rig and uh, I was actually trapped in Florida because we had the ice storm in Texas. I believe this was in February. And uh, what happened here is that I sold puts right here at 2150. So at some point I was the proud owner, I think of 7,000 shares at $21.50 and uh, right kept plummeting, right kept plummeting. And here is what I do when that happens. I fly so-called rescue missions. And I did a video on this in which I show you how to fly rescue missions. So just in a nutshell, what does this mean? Let's uh, just uh, go back here. So it means that uh, once I have shares and I get assigned at a high price and this plummets, I sell more puts and I do it in thirds, right? So my rescue mission is in one third, one third, one third. And uh, by doing so, I'm lowering my cost basis. So what, what happened initially is uh, that I was able, after I got assigned and right clip plummeting here, uh, that I was able to lower my cost basis to $15.79. And uh, that was okay, but then as you can see, ride keeps plummeting. And according to my rules, and again, your rules might be completely different, but I have my trading plan, I have my rules, and according to my trading plan, I have to fly a total of three rescue missions. This is baked into my plan. And uh, I have uh, exact rules of when I am flying these rescue missions, and I already see that uh, uh, that Nicole already posted the link to how to fly rescue missions probably here in the chat and I will also post it uh, right down here. Anyhow, so I have been able to lower my cost basis to $12.86. Now again, right now, right, it, it's it's a battle around the $6 mark, right? <laughs> this is where it has been trading around $6 and this sucks. Okay, YouTube, please don't censor me. This bleep, <laughs> get the idea. So this is a position where I'm massively down. At this point, I was able to collect some premium. So my break even, as you can see here, my break even is at $11.71. But this means that Rye needs to go back up here. This is around $11.78. So looking at this chart here, is this possible for ride? I'm zooming in just a little bit so that we can take a look at uh, what happened here recently. So again, I need ride to go up there to $11.71. Is that possible for ride? Well, as you can see, ride has been trading as low as it is right now, uh, a little bit above there actually. Here we go, just zooming in a little bit. Hoping that you're not getting dizzy or seasick, by the way, if you're easily getting seasick, sailing is not the right sport for you. <laughs> Anyhow, okay. So as we can see, uh, right at some point moved down to what, around the $7 level, I think it was at 680. And then you see within a few days, it went actually all the way up to $15.80. Then it came down, 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 down. So now we got to see. Next week, they're reporting earnings. So if we look at the earnings that uh, that they reported last time, here is where they reported earnings. After this, they had this quick and massive jump up. So we will see. Now, I know that uh, some of you have asked, well, why, why, why didn't you cut this loose? And again, everybody has a different trading plan. So at this point, see when it's trading around $6, what, what is the downside risk to the potential upside risk, right? I mean, is it possible that right goes down to $5 and $4? Yes, of course it is possible. But also, is it possible that right goes back up to $9, to $10, to $11, to $12? I believe that this is possible. So we will definitely learn more next week during the earnings call. 
And uh, until then, there's not much for me to do because now I completed all of my rescue missions. And uh, just to, to go back and uh, zoom out here a little bit. So after this trade got in trouble, um, I cannot remember exactly where I had the first third rescue mission. Uh, then I had another third. And uh, just while I was on vacation, I did the last third of a rescue mission to bring down my break even to 1171. And, and that's pretty much it. So this is, uh, see, what's, what's a long-term position? A long-term position is a short-term trade gone bad. And this is what it is. I mean, this is a trade gone bad. And I'm sharing this with you here. And uh, I, I hope that you feel my pain when I'm sharing this. I mean, this is really a trade that, that bleeps. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I can say, I don't know what I could say. Not that uh, YouTube is not censoring me. Uh, I, I want to stay with you here. So this is why I try to tr uh, stay clean. Anyhow, uh, that's bad. It's pretty bad. But I'm sharing this with you so that you know what to do when this happens to you. And again, you might actually decide, oh, you know what, because of this risk, it is not worth trading the wheel strategy. And that's absolutely fine. I mean, there's a million trading strategies out there that you can do. And if you say, well, Marcus, your trading style doesn't make sense, that's okay. For me, as you can see in realized profits, in realized profits on a $250,000 account, I'm at a $130,000 account. And uh, we are just seven months into the year. So today is August 5th, and these are the results. So I'm making, uh, what is it, a little bit over 50% in seven months? That's pretty good. See, my goal, my personal goal is, is just around 60% per year. And here I, I'm by far overachieving the goal thus far. But hey, anyhow, I'm just sharing what I do here, what works for me, and uh, you might have a different trading style, which is absolutely fine. Okay, anyhow, so I also promised you, because I really appreciate you being here, that I will take a look at the comments and answer your questions uh, around uh, yeah, around these trades or maybe the strategies that I have and uh, see if I can help you, because that's my goal here, to, to help you to become a better trader and also to simplify your trading, because you see, sometimes... Uh, people are making trading way too complicated. And uh, also to help you to generate SRC profits, uh, uh, systematic, repeatable, and consistent. Because let me just, before I jump to the question, show you one other thing. I, I mean, Hood. Let's talk about Robin Hood. I mean, Robin Hood had its IPO last week. And it IPO'd at, uh, what, $38. And as soon as they did, after the $38 IPO, it first went down. It uh, went down to, I don't know, like uh, $33, something like this. So not really a big deal. And then it had this massive run up. Look at this, $84, $84. And this is where, trust me, this morning, this morning, there were a bunch of people that bought right here, that bought where it opened this morning. And this morning it opened uh, probably right here around $63. Look at this. Right now, don't 30%. Don't do this, right? I mean, this is my, my goal here on the channel to, to steer you clear from all this, this hype and craziness and uh, just show you how I trade for a living here. Okay, anyhow. Now, to your questions, Roger says, I've uh, been missing CWM Coffee with Marcus. I've been missing you, absolutely, for sure. So good. Oh, there's my friend Jim. So I'm sure that Jim posted at some point where he is up to uh, because Jim has always been slightly ahead of me which is fantastic. Okay, so good to see everybody here. And yes, uh, thank you. I did have a, a great vacation and I miss doing coffee with Marcus. Okay, so um, yeah, want to see the RV. So uh, you probably have seen the RV. I, I really like it. It's very comfortable. Actually, uh, so on this RV right now, uh, I have owned this for the last four or five years and uh, there's 63 3,000 miles on it, 63,000 miles. And I all drove them by myself uh, together with my kids to various regattas. So I'm re really, really uh, using it a lot. Okay, good. Uh, Wannabe Sailor says, would you say, tell send cash secure puts for AMC? Uh, no, I, I would definitely stay away from AMC. I mean, AMC is just crazy. Take a look at this. I mean, it has calmed down right now, uh, but it, it's pretty much right now just going down. I mean, at wet price, you see, that's the important thing. When you're trading the wheel strategy, you need to make sure 
that you actually want to own the stock at the strike price. So at what strike price would you be comfortable uh, owning AMC? See, before all this craziness, it has been trading, what, around $10? Right now it's trading at $33, has been trading as high as $72. At what level do you want to own it, right? And this is the most important question that you need to ask yourself when trading the wheel. So I would stay away from this. Uh, so yeah, uh, Jeff says, AMC, I would stay away from these meme stocks. It was uh, your only loss last month, uh, doing well, but too hard to predict. I, I agree, I agree. Absolutely. So uh, AP Blue Boy, did you get out of ride with a profit yet? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So we'll see. Yeah, Juan says empty MSTR stock. You see, all, all of these are, are kind of uh, meme stocks or they are meme stocks, right? I mean, they're popular on Reddit, uh, sometimes in the forum Wall Street Bet, sometimes in the other. And uh, you all know about GME, right? I mean, so all the craziness about GME. Uh, let me just show you this is what happened here right so at some point gme was trading what around 20 dollars went all the way up to 480 dollars came crashing down to 40 dollars up down up down right i mean this is super hard to predict as you said with amc uh, mstr um so micro strategy it, it's also it's very similar so for me all of these stocks that are being hyped up i would say stay away from this Right. OK, so Zia says when you stop trying to uh, rescue losing trades, well, I said uh, I do it in thirds. Right. So I have money set aside in my account to do these rescue missions in a third, a third, a third. Hey, by the way, uh, if you find this helpful here at all, can you do me a favor and just click on like really quick? Because this way I know whether you're interested in me sharing my trades and uh, walking through this step by step or if you want me to do something else. So the likes always help to gauge me which videos are most popular with you. So I will do more content of those videos that have the most likes. So if you're enjoying this today, click on like and if you don't, then don't do anything. You don't have to dislike it. Don't do that. OK, so anyhow, Zia, does this help? That's uh, that's what we are doing uh, when we are stopping rescue missions. OK, so let's see. And yeah, uh, I'm still in ride, absolutely. Uh, so as I said, still in ride, waiting for next week's earnings call because after the last earnings call, it went from $7 to $15. It doubled in a week or two. Anyhow, good. So Joe says, uh, with Penn, did you always sell calls at the price you're assigned of 75? Yes, yes, that's it. I sold always, I never sell below my assigned price because this is when the stock pops up you could lose money on the stock so you don't want to do this so i either sell at my assigned price or above so for example um bank of america was assigned at 38 sold 38.50 uh pen i was assigned at 75 this morning i sold the 77 so i sold higher here anyhow um david says do you recommend upgrading to a portfolio margin account yes absolutely absolutely uh, don't use all this margin, uh, so treat it as a regular margin account. But uh, yes, if you have enough money in your account, and it depends on the broker. Some brokers uh, ask for 175,000, others 200,000, 250,000. But if you do have enough in your account, I highly recommend upgrading to a portfolio margin account. This way you have the margin just in case you need it. But I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it. Okay. So uh, let's see, uh, FF says, what do you think about selling puts that popped up on the Parex center that meets the criteria uh, of the wheel? I did it with APPS and close to date. Okay, great. I mean, here's the deal. I will never argue with the trader who's making money. I mean, if you're making money, you're doing something right, right? Obviously, I mean, why would I correct you? So if you, if this, here's what I'm mainly criticizing. I'm mainly criticizing if traders don't have a plan. But if you have a plan, Right. And if you have written down of what exactly you're going to do, yeah, when what stocks are you selling puts on? Right. Uh, what is your size? How many puts are you selling on this? What happens when you get assigned? Right. What happens? How does do your rescue missions look like? And I have all of this written down in my plan. And that's the most important thing. Have a plan and then you're good. OK. Ah, I knew it, Jim, that you would beat me. Close to $140,000, so you beat me by, what, nine, eight or nine thousand dollars Anyhow, <laughs> okay. Good, hey, greetings from Germany. Grüße zurück nach Deutschland. Good. Uh, how about your LVS position? Oh yeah, the LVS position. Uh, let's talk about this. Uh, thanks for reminding me. Okay, 
So LVS, um, that's also an interesting position here. LVS, I got assigned at 58. And uh, right now, as you can see, LVS is down to 40. I haven't flown a rescue mission that yet. So uh, we need to wait and see. And here's what I want to see before flying a rescue mission. Uh, we discussed it uh, over the past few days in the mastermind. I want to say that we are, I uh, want to see that we are leveling out. And I do believe that that 40 will be a very strong level, but I let the markets tell me whether it is or not. So I'm planning to probably sell some 40 puts if it levels out there uh, to bring down my, my cost basis to $50. And as you can see, I mean, today it already jumped uh, 5%. LVS, it's quite interesting. So I thought originally that LVS, and uh, again, thanks for reminding me about it, almost forgot. LVS, I thought Las Vegas Sands, is mainly active in Las Vegas. And Las Vegas is open again. And this is when we, we take a look at some of the other Vegas stocks that we have here, uh, right? So for example, we take, it, uh, take a look at MGM doing really well. Uh, Win, for example, doing really well. Well, it's, uh, yeah, Win is another, very similar to LVS. So we talk about this in a moment. Uh, CZR doing okay here, right? Just LVS is going down. And here's what I learned about LVS. So LVS has actually in April has sold the Venetian, which was the flagship property in Las Vegas to focus on Macau. And uh, Macau is where they make most of the money. So they bring in around $13 billion a year and $8 billion out of these $13 billion are coming out of Macau. Now, uh, I don't know how much you know about Macau, but right now, uh, or there's usually a lot of uh, Chinese people going to my Macau to gamble. And, and right now the borders are closed because of COVID concerns. So this is why it's a stock that is right now suffering from the worldwide Delta variant crisis that we have. And in other countries, uh, they're hit really hard by this. Here in the US, it's quite okay. I mean, cases are rising, uh, but this is of course hitting LVS. But here I'm not concerned about LVS. I, I'm definitely more concerned about right, for sure. I'm 100 million percent concerned, more concerned about right, not about LVS here. Anyhow, good, good, good. All right, so, Oh my gosh, Teresa, you made it. Yeah, and your account was smaller. So you win. In terms of percentages, in terms of percentages, you win. I'm only up a little bit more than 50%. You're probably up like what, 70 or 80% or something like this. Okay. Good, good, good. There's Hans aus dem Schwarzwald. Servus, grüß dich. Good. All right. So, um, Teresa, Jim, and Larry. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Teresa and Larry are part of our mastermind. Um, so Jim, not yet, but uh, Jim and I have been in touch, maybe at some point. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, so let's see what other um, questions do we have here? Yeah, uh, Jim said 100% uh, wheel and power X strategy. Okay, uh, can you please explain the one third, one third, one third? I have a full video here and uh, this video explains it. So so basically, when you fly a rescue mission to bring down your cost basis, you, you don't want to allocate the whole position. So let, let me just very briefly, I mean, super, super easy, super quick here. So um, let, let's say originally uh, the position was $100,000. I mean, this is for my account size. Uh, so this was the original position. When I'm flying rescue missions, I'm doing it with around 35K and then another 35K as it keeps dropping, right? And then another 35K. So here, if we look back at, uh, at LVS, so here I entered a 100K position at a strike price of 58. So this is where when I'm flying the first rescue mission at around 40, so I'm doing this with uh, around $35,000 in buying power, which is a uh, roughly a third of 100,000. I mean, I know it's 33,333, but you get the idea here, right? Um, so this is where I would probably bring down my cost basis as set to around 50. Now it can always happen that LVS keeps falling more because let's take a look at the weekly chart. If we take a look at the weekly chart um, and if we zoom out, yeah, we, we see that at some point, I mean, let me zoom. There we go. Yeah, we, we see that after the, the 2008 crisis, so this was here in, in 2009, it was trading as low as $5. Now, I don't think that this will happen again, uh, but we see that uh, usually this price here around, what, 
38 or something like this seems to be some solid support for LVS where over the past uh, what here this is uh, 2011 over the past 10 years over the past 10 years LVS has been trading between 38 and uh, 90 on the high side but I would say a good channel here for LVS is probably between uh, 40 and 70 and this is what I'm looking for here anyhow good does this help a little bit and again it's in a nutshell there's a there's another video that shows you more of how to do that good all right so what else uh, Craig says yeah also probably in the same boat here right to get to the 11 plus level and again it's possible let's see what happens next week I'll, I'll keep you posted I mean this is where we're back to regular coffee with Marcus so it's usually on Mondays and Thursdays uh, right before the markets close uh, 30 minutes before the market close at 2 30 central time we will we'll be here okay good uh, let's see what else do we have so um, experimental perception says I'm in coin at 340 yeah I see coin I think it's also was a little bit hyped up here just always make sure do you want to own coin at that price this is the number one question that you need to ask yourself do I want to own the stock at this price if I get assigned will I be happy and I'm telling you every single position that I got assigned I was happy that I got assigned now and with right I'm no longer happy it's a different story uh, I, I was actually falling for a trap we can talk about it another day of why I entered right besides being bored because I was trapped in Florida because of the ice storm there but there were some reasons why I entered right and this was before the Hindenburg report was released so I actually did believe that they have a truck that is ready to go into production and I did believe that they have all these pre-orders and you know the story we'll talk about it another day okay anyhow good 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 so um, then says do you adjust your buying power for the five positions in order to have buying power for the rest commissions yes you, you can do that so there's two possibilities right I mean if you want you could wire more money into the account this is number one number two you can always leave one position open for a rest commission right so if you have for example five hundred thousand dollars in buying power you could only trade let's say five positions of eighty thousand dollars so this would be a total of four hundred thousand dollars of your available margin and then you have another hundred thousand available or uh, this is what somebody asked earlier you could apply for portfolio margin if your account is large enough and then you also have uh, some buying power left so these are the three possibilities it really then depends on your situation right depends on your account size and uh, if you have a smaller account I recommend that you don't even trade up to five positions that you only trade up to three positions maybe even two positions right so if you have a, a 15 twenty thousand dollar account I mean start small just only trade two positions don't go crazy here okay cool uh, so Doug says do the three indicators on trading view walk for a different timeline than one day uh, yes I, I personally use them on daily charts but I've heard from traders who are using them on five minute chart 15 minute charts and hourly charts Doug so anyhow might help hey then first time live so good to see you good um, if you says I'm in Austin do you do mentorships yes we do uh, contact uh, contact Lisa we, we have a mastermind this is our mentorship so uh, Lisa there you see you can email her rockwelltrading.com or you can call or text it's an Austin number so if you're in the US just text her really quick and say hey I would like to know more about with uh, uh, about the mentorship about the mastermind and she can give you more information there uh, so here number on the screen I'm gonna remove this in five four three two one take a screenshot done okay so uh let's see uh gunner says it appears it's the apes at reddit playing with hood it, it could be it could be uh not quite sure but i heard that it was the the number one mentioned stock on wall street bets yesterday so that could be all right yeah i missed you i miss cwm for sure okay uh so Traxxas asks, can you start trading the wheel with 14,000 in March account, 20,000 available? Yes, and here's what I would do. With 28,000 available, I would probably uh, trade up to three positions, right? And uh, so maybe allocate $9,000 each for each position here. Uh, so that's what I would do. So therefore, you could only trade lower price stocks, but there's plenty of lower price stock. I mean, 
Bank of America is trading at $39. Data Airlines is trading at $39. Uh, so uh, LVS is trading at $40. There, there's multiple opportunities. You just have to be a little bit more patient. But yes, it is possible. It is possible. Okay. Good. Uh, so do I trade leaps options? No, I don't. I don't. I, I prefer really um, to trade uh, weekly options, right? Because I like the idea of weekly paychecks. So this is the idea, right? That I can collect money pretty much weekly and leaps are too far out. So leaps are a long expiration options. I don't even know what leaps stand for. Uh, but, but anyhow, they're usually at least a year out or so. And I, I don't deal with those. Okay. Anyhow, hey, this was great. I know that there's a, a few other questions. Uh, how do you feel about China stocks? Stay away from this. I mean, the Chinese government is cracking down on them. Stay clear. You never know what they're targeting next. You heard that recently uh, they basically said, you know what, all education companies need to be non-profit companies. Ouch, right? <laughs> Stay away from China. I mean, Chinese stocks, I am not touching them with the 10-foot pole right now. Anyhow. Good, good, good. Well, it, it, it's so good to be back. Uh, hey, if, if I somehow missed your comment, do me a favor, right after the show, leave it in the in the comments because I read all of the comments and I can respond then uh, because we are running a little bit out of time. Time flies when you're having fun, don't you? If you found this helpful at all, uh, just click on like and I will also link to a couple of videos right now uh, that you might enjoy. So they will pop up here. Take a look at these videos. Uh, you're really going to like this and I will see you in the next Coffee with Marcus. Okay, have a great rest of your day. Take care, everybody.